All right, hey folks, everything new under the sun. This is a Sunday broadcast. We're looking, taking a look at the uh, Forgotten uh, books, uh, first book of Adam and Eve. We are in chapter 61, if my Roman numerals are correct. And we're just reading through, and uh, we only have probably, was it, 10 more chapters to go before we're done this. So it's interesting reading, to be sure, um, if it's true. It is certainly extra biblical. It is certainly not something that we should be taken as inspired by God. Um, but it's interesting, nonetheless, to take a look at uh, what at least may uh, Adam and Eve may have been thinking and what they may have been uh, going through at this point in time. And we can see parallels to how we act today in terms of rebellion and um, uh, you know and believing Satan when he tells us lies. So it's pretty interesting. So we're going to take a look at a couple a couple chapters tonight. And as you see what it says. Then he took Adam and Eve by the hand and began to bring them out of the cave. But when they were uh, come a little way out of it, God knew that Satan had overcome them and had brought them out ere the 40 days were ended to take them to some distant place and to destroy them. So Satan is continually trying to destroy Adam and Eve because if he can do that, he beats God because uh, God has um, uh, made, a, made a planet, made humans for a particular reason and a purpose and to have free will so we could choose them. And if he uh, can uh, kill all the humans that God has created, he defeats God effectively. So he's trying to do, he's been just trying to do that for the last 6,000 years. Then the word of the Lord God came, again came and cursed Satan and drove him away from them. And God began to speak unto Adam and Eve, saying to them, What made you come out of the cave unto this place? Then Adam said unto God, Did thou, uh, Didst thou create a man before us? For when we were in the cave, uh, there suddenly came uh, unto us a good old man who said to us, I am a messenger from God unto you to bring you back some, to some place of rest. And we did believe, O God, that he was a messenger from thee. Um, so they were sucked into uh, Satan's uh, fakery and deceiving. And we came out with him and knew not whether we should go with him. Then God said to Adam, See, this is the father of evil arts, who brought thee and Eve out of the garden of delights. And now indeed, when he saw that thou and Eve both joined together in fasting and praying, and that ye came not out of the cave before the end of the forty days, he wished to make you your purpose vain. He tries to foil our plans. He tries to disrupt us. He tries to, tries to ruin um, the communion that we have with God. And that's what Satan is trying to do all the time. To break your mutual bond and to cut, uh, cut off all hope from you and to drive you to some place where he might destroy you. Because he was unable to do aught to you unless he showed himself in the likeness of you. So he, he can't trick us if he comes like a, a big ugly uh, devil with a pitchfork. Um, but he certainly can deceive us and trick us to see if he comes as an angel of light, if he comes as something we're familiar with and comfortable with. And that's exactly what he did. Therefore did he come to you with a face like your own and began to give you tokens as if they were all true. But I, in mercy and with favor I had unto you, did not allow him to destroy you, but I drove him away from you. Now therefore, O Adam and Eve, uh, Adam, take Eve and return to your cave to remain, remain in until the morrow of the 40th day. And when you come out, go towards the eastern gate of the garden. And uh, this, this makes me think, uh, you know, that God came back um, basically to save them again so they're not killed again uh, in, in, this, uh, in this book. And um, I think that is true of God. He continually saves us. We have no idea what he's saving us from or when he's saving us. He probably saves us all day long, every day from car accidents, from um, uh, evil in general, from um, the supernatural, from all sorts of things, from health issues, from all sorts of things. We probably have no idea how much uh, God is intervening in our daily lives and, and saving us daily. And uh, that's why we need to pick up our cross daily and, and walk with God and commune with God daily. He is a sustainer of all things. And uh, if he ceases to uphold us, we will uh, die immediately. Now therefore, Adam, take Eve and return to the cave and remain uh, until the morrow of the 48th day. Uh, verse 12. Then Adam and Eve worshipped God and praised and blessed him for the, for the deliverance that had come to them from him. And they uh, returned toward the cave. This happened at eventide uh, of the 39th day. Then, uh, then Adam and Eve stood up with great zeal, prayed to God uh, to be brought out of their want for strength, and for strength had departed from them. 
um, through hunger and thirst and prayer. But they watched the whole of that night praying until morning. Then Adam said unto Eve, Arise, let us go towards the eastern gate of the garden, as God told us. And they said uh, their prayers as they were uh, wont to do every day. And they went out uh, of the cave to go near the eastern gate of the garden. Then Adam and Eve stood up and prayed and besought God to strengthen them and to send them something to satisfy their hunger. But when they had ended their prayers, they remained where they were by reason of their failing strength. Then came the word of God to them and said unto them, O Adam, arise, go and bring hither two figs. Then Adam and Eve arose and went until they drew near to the cave. Uh, you, you see here that um, God always shows up as the Word of God. He doesn't show up uh, in person, if you will, anymore, uh, because in their mortal bodies they would be destroyed by the holiness of God. So the Word of God is what comes and entertains Adam and Eve, and that's what we have today. Because God can't come to us directly because in His holiness He would absolutely destroy us in our mortal bodies. Our mortal bodies could not stand the holiness of God. And therefore, we have the Word of God, uh, which we can use, and that points us at God and helps us to commune and understand God. So whether or not this is um, part of the canon, inspired of God, etc., um, it's very interesting, at least uh, instructionally, if you put on your Jesus glasses, if you put on your Bible glasses, and kind of understand uh, the sorts of lessons that you could glean from this. Chapter 62, But Satan the wicked... Uh, was envious because of uh, the consolation God had given them. So he prevented them and went into the cave and took the two figs and buried them outside the cave so that Adam and Eve should not find them. He also had in his thoughts to destroy them. But by God's mercy, as soon as those two figs were in the earth, God defeated Satan's counsel regarding them and made them into two fruit trees. I saw that coming. That overshadowed the cave. So God turns uh, what Satan plans for evil into good. For Satan had buried them on the eastern side of it. Notice that Satan uh, caused evil right away, but probably the trees uh, took a little while to grow. And so even though Satan means something for evil, God uh, turns it around for good, but often it may take some time to show itself as something that is good. Um, Adam and Eve probably just thought it was in the ground um, and never to see it again, uh, but it turned into two, two, fruit, two fruit trees. So if they took some time to grow, um, that would be similar to how God deals with us today. Some things, uh, he, he may not turn things immediately into good. They may take some time, and they eventually will turn into good. Then when the two trees were grown and were covered with fruit, Satan grieved and mourned and said, Better were it to have those left those figs as they were, uh, for now, behold, they have come uh, two fruit trees, whereof Adam will eat all the days of his life, uh, whereas I had in mind when I buried them, to destroy them entirely and to hide them from I. So Satan's apparently not particularly smart. He's not uh, really forward uh, thinking. He's not thinking about the outcome of his actions. And ultimately, everything he, do, he does is uh, playing into God's hand. And uh, he, he doesn't realize that. <clears throat> but God has overturned my counsel and would not uh, that this sacred fruit should perish, perish. And he made plain my intention and has defeated the counsel I had formed against his servants. Then Satan went away ashamed, and not having wrought out his design. But Adam and Eve, as they drew near the cave, saw two figs covered with fruit, two fig trees covered with fruit, and overshadowing the cave. Then Adam said to Eve, It seems to me we have gone astray. Where do these two uh, trees grow here? It seems to me that the enemy wishes to lead us astray. Sayest thou that uh, they are in, is in the earth another cave than this? So they don't recognize uh, their cave, apparently. Uh, because the trees are now there, and apparently they popped up um, between the time they were gone and when they came back. They they uh, sorry they went uh, into the cave and looked into the four corners of it, but found not the two figs. And Adam webbed, wept and said to Eve, Are we come to a wrong cave then, O Eve? It seems to me that the two fig trees are the two figs that were in the cave. And Eve said, I, for my part, do not know. Then Adam stood up and prayed and said, God... Thou didst command us to come back to the cave to take the two figs and then return to thee. But now we have not found them. O oh God, hast thou taken them and sown these two trees? Or have we gone astray in the earth? Or has the enemy deceived us? If it be real, then, O oh God, reveal uh, to us the secret of these two trees and of the two figs. I think likewise in, in this day and age, um, in the life that we live, 
we may see things and we don't understand if they were uh, the cause of God, the cause of Satan. Maybe they're the cause of God thwarting uh, Satan from his deeds and we didn't expect it. And we're, so we're not quite sure what it is yet. We're not sure if it's good or if it's bad. And like Adam and Eve, we should seek God uh, when we have any questions at all about anything. And I think that, that, that they're doing the right thing here. They don't quite understand. It's not as they expected. And so they're inquiring of God as to what the deal is. Then came the word of the Lord to Adam, word of God to Adam, and said unto him, O Adam, when I sent thee to fetch the figs, Satan went before thee to the cave, took the figs, and buried them outside, eastward of the cave, thinking to destroy them, and not sowing them with good intent. Not for his mere sake, then, had these uh, trees grown up at once, but I had mercy on thee and commanded uh, them to grow. So God apparently supernaturally commanded them to grow. And they grew to be two large trees, um, that you be overshadowed by the branches and find rest underneath them. God works all things to be for uh, towards good uh, for those who love the Lord, and that's a, that's a very biblical uh, sort of thing. And that I make you see my power and my marvelous works, and also to show you Satan's meanness and his evil. So God is uh, actively explaining it to him when when Satan does do something. Uh, we don't always have the benefit of that in this day and age, um, you know where. Uh, God explains us explains to us exactly what has occurred behind our backs when when we didn't know it, uh, and that's part where uh, faith comes in to know that God is working all things toward uh, all things for good um, for us as long as we love the Lord He's working all things uh, for good, and also to show you Satan's meanness and his evil work works for ever since you came out of the garden He has not ceased no not one day from doing you some harm. But I have not given him power over you. So God hasn't given Satan power over us. Um, he has power to tempt us. But ultimately, he doesn't power. He o- doesn't have power over us to force us to do something. It's always our choice when we decide to um, step away from God and move towards Satan and to do sin or evil. And God said, Henceforth, O Adam, rejoice on the account of these ch- on the trees, thou and Eve, and rest under them when you feel weary. But uh, eat not of their fruit, nor come near them. Then Adam wept and said, O God, wilt thou again kill us? Or wilt thou drive us away from before thy face and cut off, uh, cut our life off from off the face of the earth? O God, I beseech thee, if thou knowest that there be in these trees either death or some of other evil, uh, as at the first time, so as in the garden, root them up from the near, near the cave and wither them, and leave us to die of heat and hunger and of thirst. For we know thy marvelous works, uh, O God, that they are great, and that by the power thou canst bring one thing out of another without one's wishes, one's wish. For thy power can make rocks to become trees, and trees to become rocks. Chapter 64. Then God looked upon Adam, and upon his strength of mind, upon his endurance of hunger and thirst, and at the heat, and he changed the two fig trees into two figs, as they were at first, and said to Adam and Eve, Eat of you, uh, each of you may take one fig. And they took them as the Lord commanded them. And he said to them, Go ye into the cave, eat the figs, satisfy your hunger, lest ye die. So as God commanded, they went into the cave about the time when the sun was setting, and Adam and Eve stood up and prayed at the uh, time of the sun's setting. Then they sat down to eat the figs, but they knew not how to eat them, for they were not accustomed to eat earthly food. They feared also lest if they eat, their stomachs should be burdened, and their flesh thickened, and their hearts uh, take a liking to earthly food. Interesting uh, comments there, but earthly food. Uh, the food in the garden, was that not earthly? That was heavenly? That was uh, some supernatural uh, sort of sustenance there? But while they were thus seated, God, out of pity uh, for them, sent the angel, lest they should perish of hunger and thirst. And the angel said unto Adam, And Eve, God says to you that ye have not strength to fast until, de- until death. Eat, therefore, and strengthen your bodies, for ye are now animal flesh that cannot subsist without food and drink. So again, another reference to um, not having, not being required to eat in the Garden of Eden, um, they were surviving. They were, I get, uh, you know, eternal beings. They were meant to live forever in the Garden of Eden, and they didn't have to eat anything uh, to uh, subsist. Then Adam and Eve took the figs and began to eat uh, to eat of them. But God had put them into a mixture uh, as a uh, as of savory bread and blood. Um, so God apparently changed the 
the taste of these um, so that they would like them. Then the angel went to, from Adam and Eve, who ate the figs until they were satisfied their hunger, until they had satisfied their hunger. Then they put uh, by what remained, but the power of God, uh, but by the power of God, the figs became full as before, because God blessed them. So this is kind of like the feeding of the five thousand, where food is multiplying um, before their eyes supernaturally. God is providing food um, for them. After this, Adam and Eve rode, rose and prayed with a joyful heart and renewed strength and praised and rejoiced abundantly the whole of the night. And this was the end of the 83rd day. Interesting. So again, uh, I mean, they're praise and worshiping God and they're praying morning and evening and they're asking God. They're communing regularly with God. Again, something that we do not do in this day and age uh, well. Uh, and I'm speaking for myself. I absolutely do not th do this as much as I should. 65. And when it was day, they rose and prayed after their custom. And they went out of the cave. But as they felt great trouble from the food they had eaten, um, as to which they were not used, they went about um, the cave saying to each other, What has happened to us through eating that this pain should come upon us? Woe be to us, we shall die. Better for us to have died than to have eaten and have kept our bodies pure than to have defiled them with food. Then Adam said to Eve, did, uh, This pain did not come to us in the garden, neither did we eat such bad food there. So apparently they ate, just they, they didn't eat bad food there. Thinkest thou, O Eve, that God will plague us through the food that is in us, and that our inner inwards will come out, or that God uh, means to kill us with this pain before he has fil fulfilled his promise to us. Then Adam besought the Lord. So they, again, they went back to God and they said, Look, God, well, what's, deal, what's the deal here? O Lord, let us not perish the food we have eaten. O Lord, smite us not, but deal, deal with us according to thy great mercy and forsake us not until the day of the promise thou hast made to us. They have a, a seemingly uh, a huge lack of understanding as it relates to food. And, and you know, you may laugh at that, but I think in this, uh, we too have a huge lack of understanding of what's happening and we need to... Uh, Petition God uh, anytime we have questions about what's occurring because there's a whole lot of stuff happening behind the scenes usually um, in terms of God's will, um, in terms of the supernatural and the spiritual forces battling um, uh, that we can't see. Um, then God looked upon them and once, and at once fitted them uh, for eating food as unto this day so that they should not perish. So... Uh, Sounds like almost God, uh, you know, set their bodies up then to eat food. Then Adam and Eve came back into the cave, sorrowful and weeping because of the alteration in their nature. They were now their physical bodies were altered in some way, so that they could uh, uh, eat this food. Uh, interesting. Uh, it doesn't make sense biblically that um, God didn't have their bodies ready uh, when they were kicked out of the garden to start with. I don't know. It's it, certainly an interesting story. So. And they both knew uh, from that hour that they were altered beings, that their hope of returning to the garden was now cut off because their bodies were physically changed uh, to be able to manage the uh, earth and the uh, post, uh, post paradise, the post garden life that they are now uh, living in. For now their body had, bodies had strange functions and all the flesh that requires food and drink for its existence cannot be in the garden. I'm wondering if that's uh, speaking of... Um, um, uh, excreting uh, poop and uh, you know urinating and, and these sorts of things. I wonder if that's uh, kind of what it's uh, referring to. Then Adam and Eve. Uh, Adam said to Eve, "Behold, our hope is now cut off, and so is our trust to enter the garden. We no longer belong to the inhabitants of the garden. So they, they know they're different beings now. They'll never go back there. But henceforth we are earthly and of the dust, and of the inhabitants of the earth shall not uh, shall." We shall not return to the garden until the, the day in which God has promised to save us and to bring us again into the garden as he promised us. At this point in time, I think Adam finally is realizing it. Uh, we are here to stay. God has changed us uh, so that we can live in this, so that we can survive. Now we just have to figure out how to survive here and, um, and wait until the day that God promised, uh, you know, to, uh, where he promised his son to die on a cross for our sins so that we can all be in paradise with him. Uh, at some point, after the 5,500 years, which is what this said in earlier chapters. Then they prayed to God that they uh, would have mercy on them, after which 
their mind was quieted, their hearts were broken, and their longing was cooled down. And they were like strangers on earth. That night Adam and Eve spent in the, night, in the cave uh, where, they, where they slept heavily by reason of the food that they had eaten. So now they were affected significantly by uh, the food that they were eating, that they had eaten. And we'll do another chapter here. Chapter 66. When it was morning, the day after they had eaten food, Adam and Eve prayed in the cave. And Adam said to Eve, Lo, we asked for food of God, and he gave it. But now let us also ask him to give us a drink of water. Then they arose and went to the bank of the stream of water that was of the south, uh, on the south uh, border of the garden, in which they had uh, before thrown themselves. And they stood on the bank and prayed to God that he would command them to drink the water. Then the word of God came to Adam and said unto him, O Adam, thy body is become brutish and requires water to drink. Take ye and drink, though thou and Eve give thanks and praise. So we are to give thanks and praise for what we have to eat. Um, but they, that was not natural to them, and uh, they were not required to eat and drink in the Garden of Eden. Adam and Eve drew, then drew near and drank of it. Their bodies felt refreshed. And having drunk, they praised God. And then returned to the cave after their former custom. This happened at the end of 83 days. Then they, on the 84th day, uh, they took two figs and hung them in the cave together with the leaves thereof to, uh, to, to be to them a sign and a blessing from God. And they placed them there until they should arise uh, a posterity to them who should see the wonderful things God had done to them. So they put something on the wall to remind them that God is, does great things. And we too, uh, similar to all the other, you know, the altars to read the Bible, etc., uh, we put something to remind us that God is good, God provides for us, and that's what they're doing here. Then Adam and Eve again stood outside the cave and besought God to show them some food wherewith, no, wherewith to nourish their bodies. Then the word of God came and said unto them, O Adam, go down to the westward of the cave, as far as the land of dark soil, and there... Uh, thou shalt find food. And Adam hearkened unto the word of God, took Eve, and went down to a land of dark soil. Interesting. Uh, dark is that uh, soil that can grow crops well. And found there wheat growing in the ear, and ripe, and figs to eat. And Adam rejoiced over it. Again, do, do, do they know it? Do they know what wheat was? Do they know how to um, to process that, etc.? Did God plant that information in them, or do they have information that they learned from the Garden of Eden? Then the word of God came unto again to Adam and said unto him, Take of this wheat and make the bread of it to nourish thy body withal. And God gave Adam's heart wisdom to work out the corn until it became bread. So there is the answer to that question. God actually gave knowledge to Adam when he needed it to do what he needed to do. And I think that's another great life lesson. You, God won't give you the information until you actually need to use that information. God could give you strength, uh, you know, to deal with cancer 20 years before you get cancer, but you don't need that strength until you get cancer. So when you get cancer, God gives you that strength. He gives you that knowledge. He gives you the wisdom uh, at the right time, and his timing is good all the always. And so I think that's, again, it's an interesting picture of uh, God's wisdom and how he provides what we need when we need it, not necessarily before we need it and not after we need it, but just at the right time when we need it, he gives us wisdom, he gives us knowledge, he gives us information, and he cares for us. Adam accomplished all that until he grew very faint and weary. Then he returned to the cave rejoicing as, what he had, as to what he had learned uh, of what is done with wheat until it is made into bread for one's use. So this apparently is the first loaf of bread and the first learning that Adam then uh, uh, sent down to all of us. Uh, you know, how do we make a, a loaf of bread today? Well, that knowledge came from Adam, who got it, who was supernaturally endowed with that knowledge uh, outside of the Garden of Eden, apparently, when God taught him how to um, grind corn and wheat into bread. Pretty interesting stuff. Pretty interesting stuff, I gotta say. To read through this, to kind of ponder it, to uh, put it beside the Bible and, and see the parallel uh, passages and comments and uh, to kind of get a background understanding of where Adam and Eve were and what they were thinking and what they were doing. Uh, whether it's true or not, I, uh, again, I can't say, um, but it is pretty fascinating nonetheless. I'm going to stop there for today, guys. Thanks for watching. I think my 
part numbers are mixed up. I think I mixed, uh, I missed a uh, part number or a skipped one or something. But anyways, they're all on the same playlist. So if you check out the playlist that they're in, you'll, you can see all the previous uh, parts I did there. So thanks for watching. Thanks for supporting, guys, as we come near 7,000 subscribers. I appreciate all of you for subscribing. Please share and, and uh, like the video. Thumbs up, all that good stuff. And uh, that, that certainly supports me and helps me out. So thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.